Hello, Word Nerds. Thank you for putting on this podcast called The Dictionary. I uh, think you know what you are in for, but for those of you newcomers, this is the podcast where I read The Dictionary and sometimes uh, give my personal thoughts and comments. Um, Today is some day at the end of July. This should be interesting because um, kind of right outside my window, uh, they are doing some painting. They have ladders and scrapers and painting, so uh, you may hear some ladder noises, uh, but we'll see. And if you do, then you can feel like you are in my bedroom with me. The first word is blueprint. One word, noun from 1886. One, a photographic print in white on a bright blue ground or blue on a white ground used especially for copying maps, mechanical drawings, and architects' plans. Architects is plural possessive. Number two, something resembling a blueprint as in serving as a model or providing guidance. Mm, I had a little silent burp there. Uh, And then it says, especially, a detailed plan or program of action. You always need to have a plan. You need to prepare anything before you do it, right? You should. And if you don't, you know, it's fun that way. Uh, And then we have an example, as in, a blueprint for victory. Blueprint is also a transitive verb. Next is blue racer, two words, noun from 1886, a blue or greenish blue colored colubrid snake occurring chiefly from southern Ontario to Missouri, or some people say Missouri. The scientific name is Colubert constrictor foxii. Foxi. Uh, that one is weird. It's F O X I I. I don't know how to pronounce the double I there. Foxii. Um, colubrid. C O L U B R I D. I still don't, I don't know what that means. Um, All right, next we have blue ribbon, two words with hyphen, adjective from 1926, of outstanding quality, especially consisting of individuals selected for quality, reputation, or authority, as in a blue ribbon panel. Also as in, this is a blue ribbon podcast, don't you think? Now we have blue ribbon again, but there is no hyphen, just two words, noun from 1651, one an honor or award gained for preeminence. Number two, a blue ribbon awarded as an honor as to the first place winner in a competition. I have an itch on my nose. Next is blues, the word blue with an S. Uh, It is a noun from 1741. One, low spirits. Synonym is melancholy, as in suffering a case of the blues. Number two, a song often of lamentation characterized by usually 12-bar phrases, three-line stanzas in which the words of the second line usually repeat those of the first, and continual occurrence of blue notes in melody and harmony. Uh, I think I've said this before, but I just love seeing these very specific, uh, almost scientific descriptions of things Um So I I would love to hear somebody at a blues bar say, uh, just describe what I just read. I'm not going to reread it. That would be ridiculous. Number three, jazz or popular music using harmonic and phrase structures of blues. Next is blue screen. Two words, noun from 1977. A photographic technique in which a subject is filmed in front of a blue background so as to allow matte processing of the film with other footage. Also, the blue background is called the blue screen. Matte, in this case, for those who don't know, is spelled M-A-T-T-E. And this is something that doesn't get used as much as it used to because it's mostly used, uh, they mostly use green screens. When I first learned about blue screen, I think it was the early 90s, uh, my dad was teaching me about it. And I guess the, the type of blue that they used was a color that really didn't wasn't used uh, in nature very much. And then I think later they realized, maybe they already knew, I don't know, but um, then green, this very specific green took over it. I th- in fact, I think it's called chroma key green or chroma green. Um, and this green, I think, is actually used in nature even less than this blue. 
um, and so it's easier to to delete that information. Um, you know, movies these days use green screen all the time, so it's it's the same type of uh, technology. They do use blue sometimes, like if the if the uh, if this um, if the scene actually does have a lot of green in it, then they will use blue um, because it uh, it's not as much in the scene, so it's easier to fix to take out. All right, enough of that. Next is blue shark, two words, noun from circa 1672, a chiefly pelagic shark found in all tropical and temperate seas that occasionally attacks humans. I don't know what pelagic is, P-E-L-A-G-I-C. That sucks that it sometimes attacks humans, but you should know, if you don't already know, that shark attacks are extremely, extremely rare. Uh, so don't don't worry. I mean, obviously, don't go into water with sharks unless you are uh, supervised by professionals, but they are pretty rare at beaches and such. Uh, let's see. The scientific name is Prionase or Prionase glauca. Next is blue sheep, two words, noun from 1910, and we have the synonym baral, B-H-A-R-A-L. Must have read that a little while ago. Next is blue shift, one word, noun from 1951, the displacement of the spectrum of an approaching celestial body toward shorter wavelengths. Blue shifted is an adjective. They use this in cosmology a lot, studying the universe and the cosmos, and I think it's the blue shift and the red shift um, will allow scientists to figure out a lot of things. For instance, the expansion of the universe, and I think that's actually what they used to figure out that it was uh, uh, expanding, um, and then also to figure out, um, you know, if there's like a planet going around a distant star or something, they'll use blue shift, red shift science and such. Next is blue sky, two words with a hyphen, adjective from 1906, one, having little or no value, as in blue sky stock. Number two, not grounded in the realities of the present. Synonym is visionary, as in blue sky thinking. Next is blue sky law. I wonder if this is similar. Probably. Uh, It's a noun from 1912. A law providing for the regulation of the sale of securities as stock. So that's probably those stocks that have little to no value. Do they also call those penny stocks or something? I don't know anything about the stock market. Next is Blues Man, one word, noun from 1966, a man who plays or sings the blues. Uh, What was the name of that guy in The Simpsons? Bleeding Gums Murphy, I think that's what it was. He was a blues man, and Lisa would be considered a blues woman. Next is Blue Spruce, two words, noun from 1884, a spruce native to the Rocky Mountains that has sharp, usually bluish-gray needles and is often planted as an ornamental. Next is blue stem, one word, noun from circa 1852. One, a tall North American grass that has smooth bluish leaf... Oh, this is hard to say. Smooth bluish leaf sheaths. Wow, that is a such a tongue twister. Smooth bluish leaf sheaths and slender spikes born in pairs or clusters is a dominant grass of the original tall grass prairies. Uh, I assume that's original. It's just the uh, O-R-I-G. Original tall grass prairies and is used for hay and forage, called also big blue stem. And then it says to compare to sand blue stem. And then number two, we have the synonym little blue stem. The scientific name is Andropogon gerardii. And then there's another one, Andro, Andropogon furcatas, furcatas. I just want to say that phrase again. Smooth bluish leaf sheaths. Next is blue stocking, one word, noun from 1790. A woman having intellectual or literary interests. This is from the Blue Stocking Society, which is an 18th century literary clubs, or they, they were 18th century literary clubs. Um, I, want, I wonder if this gets used ever anymore. A woman having intellectual or literary interests? I mean, that's just 
normal these days. I think at the time in the 18th century, uh, men probably didn't think that women could have intellectual or literary interests. So, uh, you know, we know that that is a ridiculous idea. Next is bluestone, one word, noun from 1709, a building stone of bluish gray color. Uh, Blue streak is next. It is two words, noun from 1830, one, something that moves very fast. Number two, a constant stream of words, as in talked a blue streak. And now we have our very last word for this episode. It is bluesy. B-L-U-E-S-Y, adjective from 1946, resembling, characteristic of, or suited to the blues. That could be the music, that could probably be the feeling of melancholy, could be something else, don't know. All right, we had blueprint, blue racer, blue ribbon, blue ribbon, blues, blue screen, blue shark, blue sheep, blue shift, blue sky, blue sky, la, blues man, blue spruce, Blue stem, blue stocking, blue stone, blue streak, bluesy. I'm going to pick blues as the word of the episode because I really like blues music. I don't listen to enough of it. Um, I think I probably picked blue grass uh, in a couple episodes ago. I really don't remember um, because I'm recording this like a week later. But uh, yeah, I don't listen to as much music as I would like in general. But blues is good. Go listen to some blues. Uh, So thank you for listening. Uh, Please go rate and review. As I've said many times, that really does help, especially on Apple, to get uh, to get this thing going up the charts and more people can hear some idiot read the dictionary. Uh, Share, share, share. Please and thank you. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I don't know if you can hear in the background. I'll stop talking for a second. There is a noise out there. Yes, the painters are still painting. For me, it's only been mere seconds. For you, it's been a whole day. Um, If you are listening to these the day that these are released, um, or maybe it's just a few seconds for you. Um, As Literally, as soon as I hit the stop button in the last episode, this noise started. I don't know what it is. Maybe they're mixing paint. Who knows? I could open the window and look, but I'm not gonna. The first word is blew it. Oh, I blew it. B-L-U-E-T, noun from circa 1821, any of several perennial North American herbs um, of the madder family, M-A-D-D-E-R, especially one having tuft stems and bluish white or purplish flowers with yellow centers. I've got some scientific names to tell you about. Uh, Let's see, the North American herbs, the genus is Hydiotis, um, and then I still don't know what's this S Y N. I know I've looked this up before. Whatever it says S Y N, and then it says uh, Houstonia. It was that like Houston, the city, Houstonia. And then when it said especially one of them, it also said it says Hediatus uh, Chirulia. That's the scientific name for this one. And then S Y N Houstonia Cerulia. I have some stuff to learn. Maybe eventually I'll get there. Um, Okay, next we have blue tang, two words, noun from circa 1902. Uh, I want to say that this is the blueberry flavored of tang, but I don't think that's what it is. It is a surgeon fish that is bright blue with darker longitudinal stripes when mature and occurs chiefly from Bermuda to Brazil. Sounds like a song. From Bermuda to Brazil, I go and get my fill. Um, the scientific name is Acantharis ceruleus. And then I guess a tang is a kind of surgeon fish. Next is blue tick. I think that noise is getting louder. Is it coming closer? Is it going to get me? All right, let's finish up this episode before that happens. Blue tick, one word, noun from 1945. Any of a breed of tricolor coonhounds, of American origin having the white areas of the coat usually heavily ticked with black. Uh, I want to see a picture of this. Blue tick. Next we have blue tongue. One word, noun from 1863. This is what happens to me if I have a blue flavored 
popsicle or lollipop or something with food coloring that probably should not be ingested by humans. Um, okay, this is a virus. Oh, yeah, no, not what I said. A virus disease, chiefly of sheep, that is marked by hyperemia, cyanosis, and by swelling and sloughing of the mucous membranes, especially about the mouth and tongue, and is caused by a rheovirus. That's the end of that sentence. And then in parentheses, it says the species blue tongue virus of the genus obivirus or obivirus. Uh, that sounds like it's very bad, and it hopefully doesn't happen to your sheep. Next, oh, the noise went away. It'll probably come back. Next is blue vitriol. I think that's how it's pronounced. Two words, noun from 1728, a hydrated copper sulfate, C-U-S-O-4-5-H-2-O. Next is blue water. Two words, noun from 1582, the open sea. That's the entire definition. Blue water is also an adjective. Next is blue weed. One word. Yeah, it's the words blue and weed. Noun from circa 1837. One, we have the synonym vipers bugloss, or is it bugloss? B-U-G-L-O-S-S. And number two, a small weedy sunflower of the southwestern U.S. with blue-green or gray-green foliage. The scientific name is Helianthus ciliaris. Ah, oh, it's very silly. Next is blue whale, the largest animal that is currently living on the earth. And actually, it might be the largest animal ever, even when dinosaurs are considered. That probably is false, but I feel like I've heard that. Okay, it is a noun from 1851, a very large baleen whale that may reach a weight of 150 tons, which is 135 metric tons, and a length of 100 feet, which is 30 meters, and is generally considered the largest living animal. Generally considered? Why generally considered? Who is arguing that statement? Um, let's see, the scientific name is Balem, Balenoptera musculus. And then S-Y-N, Sibaldus musculus. Next is, oh, and then there's a picture of a blue whale, black and white drawing. Um, you know, there, it, it doesn't have a scale. It doesn't have it in reference to the size of a human. Uh, but, you know, it looks like a blue whale. Next is blue winged teal. Blue winged is hyphenated and then teal, T-E-A-L. Noun from 1789, a North American dabbling duck, ooh, a dabbling duck, with a blue patch on each wing and, in the male, a white crescent on each cheek. The scientific name is Anas Discourse. Next is Bluey, blue with a Y, adjective from 1802, and the synonym is bluish. Next is, well, it's our last word, bluff, B-L-U-F-F, we are going to read the th uh, three forms in this episode and then the fourth form in the next episode. So the first form of bluff is an adjective from 1627, 1A, having a broad, flattened front. 1B, rising steeply with a broad, flat, or rounded front. Number two, good-naturedly frank and outspoken. Bluffly is an adverb and bluffness is a noun. And we have a bunch of synonym information. Bluff, blunt, brusque, curt, crusty, and gruff mean abrupt and unceremonious in speech and manner. By the way, I just got to say, those are all great words. Bluff, blunt, brusque, curt, crusty, and gruff. Sound like the six dwarves that were not used. Uh, bluff connotes good-natured outspokenness and unconventionality. As in, did I say that word right? Unconventionality. Yep. As in a bluff manner. Blunt suggests directness of expression in disregard of others' feelings. As in a blunt appraisal. Brusque, B-R-U-S-Q-U-E, applies to a sharpness or ungraciousness. As in a brusque response. Curt, C-U-R-T, implies disconcerting shortness or rude conciseness. 
as in a curt command. Krusty, spelled with a C, not a K, as some of you Simpsons fans might think, Krusty suggests a harsh or surly manner, sometimes concealing in an inner kindliness. By the way, that you they use the word surly. I think um, surly was actually one of the names of the um, of the dwarves that they used in The Simpsons. You know, they like to um, satire things, and I think that was one of the ones that they used for them. Okay, um, as in a crusty exterior. Gruff it, uh, suggests a horse or husky speech, which I feel like I'm getting now, which may imply bad temper, but more often implies embarrassment or shyness, as in puts on a gruff pose. Uh, so I have a little game for you people. Uh, what would be the seventh dwarf in dwarf, dwarf, dwarf? Uh, what would be the seventh one of this group of seven weird uh, bluff Blunt, brusque, curt, crusty, gruff dwarfs. And also, what would they be called? Do they have a name? Do they ha- they ha- do they- Does this group have a name? Send me an email, a message, a direct thing, you know, whatever you want. Okay, um, let's see. This is obsolete from Dutch blaf, which means flat, akin to the middle lower German blaf, which means smooth. Now we have the second form of bluff. It is a noun from 1666. A high, steep bank. Synonym is cliff. And the last word, third form of bluff. It is a verb from 1791. First, our transitive. Number 1A, to deter or frighten by pretense or a mere show of strength. 1B, synonym is deceive. 1C, synonym is feign. F-E-I-G-N. As in, the catcher bluffed a throw to first. Number two, to deceive an opponent in cards by a bold bet on an inferior hand. And then we have one intransitive definition which says, to bluff someone, act deceptively. Bluffer is a noun. So our words were blue it, blue tang, blue tick, blue tongue, blue vitriol, blue water, blue weed, Blue whale, blue winged leaf, bluey, bluff, bluff, and bluff. Um, I want to pick something. Again, I think you should send me emails or direct messages on what you think the word of the episode should be. Um, I think I'm going to pick blue tongue for some reason because that sounded crazy and weird. Uh, yeah, sure. Blue tongue will be the word of the episode Thank you very much for listening to my talking. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this episode of The Dictionary. It is the top of page 137, and I have a burp coming on because I just drank some water. Well, that was weird. Okay, the first word is the fourth form of bluff, B-L-U-F-F. Noun from 1845, 1A, an act or instance of bluffing, 1B, the practice of bluffing, 2, one who bluffs. Now we have the word bluing. It is basically the word blue with I-N-G, but it could also be spelled with no E. Noun from 1669, a preparation used in laundering to counteract yellowing of white fabrics. Next is bluish, adjective from the 14th century, somewhat blue. And did we have, this is bluish with no E, um, but I think we probably had bluish with an E, and I am looking through, actually no, I'm not seeing that one. Okay, for some reason I thought that I had read it. Okay, so this one is somewhat blue, having a tinge of blue. Bluishness is a noun. All right, next is blunder. It is the first form, verb from the 14th century. Uh, First are intransitive. One, to move unsteadily or confusedly. I feel like that's how I walk through life. Number two, to make a mistake through stupidity, ignorance, or carelessness. Next is transitive. Number one, to utter stupidly, confusedly, which is a great word, or thoughtlessly. Number two, 
to make a stupid, careless, or thoughtless mistake in. Blunderer is a noun, and blunderingly is an adverb. This is from Middle English, blunderin, probably of Scandinavian origin, akin to the Old Norse blunda, which means to shut one's eyes, or doze. Uh, that is from a Norwegian dialect, blundra. Now we have the second form of blunder. It is a noun from 1693. A gross error or mistake resulting usually from stupidity, ignorance, or carelessness. And then a synonym is the word error, E-R-R-O-R. Next is blunderbuss. Uh, blunder with a B-U-S-S. One word, noun from 1654. Number one, a muzzle-loading firearm with a short barrel and flaring muzzle to facilitate loading. Okay. Number two, a blundering person. This is from the folk etymology from the obsolete Dutch donderbus, D-O-N-D-E-R-B-U-S, from the Dutch donder, which means thunder, plus the obsolete dunder word, which means bus, which means gun, so thunder gun. Uh, that's where that's where the whole gun definition comes from. Um, how it went from donder to blunder, I don't know why they just didn't keep it like that, but okay. Next, we have the word blunt, B-L-U-N-T. It is the first form, adjective from the 13th century. 1A, slow or deficient in feeling. Synonym is insensitive. 1B, obtuse in understanding or discernment. Synonym is dull. Number two, having an edge or point that is not sharp as in a blunt instrument. 3a, abrupt in speech or manner. 3b, being straight to the point. Synonym is direct. And then it says, another synonym, see the words dull and bluff. Ah, uh, well, at least one of them is our, our, our dwarves. Was dull in there too? No, it wasn't. Maybe that would be the seventh one. Uh, bluntly is an adverb and bluntness is a noun. Now we have the second form of blunt. It is a verb from the 14th century. Transitive is first, to make less sharp, definite, or forceful. And then intransitive, to be, oh, to become blunt. And now we have the third form of blunt, noun from 1990, a cigar that has been hollowed out and filled with marijuana. This is from, let's see, blunt is a short, thick cigar, so that the, the cigar is already called a blunt, um, which is, I guess, from the first form of blunt that I read a bit ago. Uh, so yeah, they, it's a, I, I guess it's, yeah, it's a cigar made with tobacco leaves, and uh, then they take the tobacco out, uh, I mean, the, like the paper is tobacco leaves, and then they take the ground up tobacco inside, take it out, and they fill it with the marijuana. Uh, if you are a young person listening to this, go talk to an adult and have a real conversation about this. Next is blunt trauma. Two words, noun from 1962. A usually serious injury caused by a blunt object or surface, as in died of blunt trauma to the head. Nobody wants that. Now we have the word blur, B-L-U-R. First form, noun from 1519. One, a smear or stain that obscures. Number two, something vaguely or indistinctly perceived, especially something moving or occurring too quickly to be clearly seen. This is perhaps akin to the Middle English bleren, which means to blear. Next, we have the second form of blur. It is a verb from 1520. Transitive is first. One, to obscure or blemish by smearing. Number two, synonym is sully. Three, to make dim, indistinct, or vague in outline or character. Number four, to make cloudy or confused. Now we have intransitive. One, to make blurs. Number two, to become vague or indistinct. Blurryingly. Did I say that right? Or blurringly, that would be the word. That is an adverb. Now we have the word blurb, B-L-U-R-B. First form, 
noun from 1914. A short publicity notice, as on a book jacket. And this word was coined by Gellet Burgess. Gellet is G-E-L-E-T-T, Burgess. I wonder what the thought process was, go, what was going on in Gellet's head when he or she, probably he, but he or she said a blurb. All right, now we have the second form of blurb. It is a transitive verb from 1915 to describe or, pra- or praise in a blurb. Next is blurry, adjective from 1884, lacking definition or focus. Blurrily is an adverb and blurriness is a noun. And now we have our last word for this episode. It is blurt, B-L-U-R-T, transitive verb from 1573, to utter abruptly and impulsively, usually used with the word out, blurt out. Blurter is a noun. So we had bluff, bluing, bluish, blunder, blunder, blunderbuss, blunt, 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 trauma, blur, blur, blurb, blurb, blurry, blurt. I am going to pick blunderbuss as the word of the episode because, um, you know, blundering people can sometimes be funny, but also the word is a funny word. Thank you very much for listening. Rate and review and share and tell all the people who you think need to learn some new words. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. The painters are still out there. I think they're moving their their ladders. I hear the ladder noises. The first word is blush. B-L-U-S-H. Oh, oh, by the way, I just uh, hit stop on the previous episode, and my finger accidentally hit the button quicker than I expected, so... I haven't listened back to it, but I very well have may have cut off my last word, so uh, I didn't do that on purpose, but I'm leaving it in there, probably. All right, first form of blush. It is a noun from the 14th century. One, outward appearance. Synonym is view, V-I-E-W, like I have a room with a view. And then we have an example, at first blush. Number two. A reddening of the face, especially from shame, modesty, or confusion. Three, a red or rosy tint. Four, a cosmetic applied to the face to give a usually pink color or to accent the cheekbones. Blushful is an adjective. Second form of blush, verb, let's see, is it? I think it's just intransitive. Uh, From the 15th century, one, to become red in the face especially from shame, modesty, or confusion. Two, to feel shame or embarrassment. Three, to have a rosy or fresh color. Synonym is bloom. Blushingly is an adverb. This is from Middle English, blushen, from Old English, bliskan, which means to redden, akin to the Old English blesa, which means flame, from the Old High German blohen, which means to burn brightly. Now we have blusher, noun from 1659. One, one who blushes. Number two, we have the number four definition for the word blush, which looks like it is the first form of blush. I don't know why they didn't say it's from the first form, but that one is a cosmetic applied to the face to give a usually pink color or to accent the cheekbones. Blusher. Now we have blush wine. Noun from 1985, any of various pinkish table wines. Next is bluster. It's like buster with an L. First form, verb from the 15th century. Intransitive is first. One, to talk or act with noisy, swaggering threats. 2A, to blow in stormy, noisy gusts. 2B, to be windy and boisterous. Transitive is next. One, to utter with noisy self-assertiveness. Two, to drive or force by blustering. Blusterer is a noun, and blusteringly is an adverb. And now we have the second form of bluster. Noun from 1583. One, a violent, boisterous blowing. Two, violent commotion. Three, loudly boastful or threatening speech. 
Blusterous is an adjective and blustery is also an adjective. What sort of context would you choose blusterous or blustery? Why? What's the what's the difference? Is there a certain context that you would use one or the other? I don't know. All right. Now we have a bunch of um, abbreviations through most of the rest of the episode. Uh, the first one is BLVD. It is an abbreviation for Boulevard. Those are all lowercase, by the way. Next is B lymphocyte. The capital B. Second word is L Y M P H O C Y T E. Noun from 1971. The synonym is B cell, which I think we've read. Next is B M, both lowercase, abbreviation for beam, like a light beam or a wooden beam in uh, the ceiling. Now we have BM again, but it is they're both capitalized. There are seven definitions for this abbreviation. One, Bachelor of Medicine. Two, Bachelor of Music. Three, Basal Metabolism. Four, Bill of Material. Five, Board Measure. Six, Bowel Movement. And seven, Bronze Medal. So you really got to know your context because you could be talking about winning an award. You could be talking about medicine or music or pooping. Now we have BME, all capitalized. Abbreviation for one, Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering. Two, Bachelor of Mining Engineering. And three, Bachelor of Music Education. Next is BMI, all caps, abbreviation for Body Mass Index. Next is BMOC, all caps, abbreviation for Big Man on Campus. Next is B-Movie, capital B, and then the second word is movie, noun from 1948, a cheaply produced motion picture. But sometimes they are amazing. Just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's bad. There can be some really amazing and fun uh, movies that are made cheap. Next is BMR, all caps, abbreviation for Basal Metabolic Rate. BMS is next, all caps, abbreviation for Bachelor of Marine Science. Next is BMT, all caps, abbreviation for Bachelor of Medical Technology. Next is BMX, all caps. It is, I would have said, an abbreviation, but it's a noun from 1975. Bicycle racing that resembles motocross with dirt tracks and jumps and the use of special heavy-duty bicycles. It says it is from bicycle and motocross, and the X is a symbol for the word or for the part of the word cross. So B for bicycle, M for moto, and X for cross. Next is BN, lowercase, abbreviation for one, baron, two, battalion, three, beacon, and four, bean, like B-E-E-N, like I've been reading the dictionary. Now we have BN again, all caps, abbreviation for one, bachelor of nursing, two, banknote, Three, Bureau of Narcotics. Next is BNDD, all caps, abbreviation for Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs. Next is BNS, all caps, abbreviation for Bachelor of Naval Sciences. Next is BO, ooh, this will be fun, all caps, abbreviation for one, Back Order. Two, Best Offer. Three, Body Odor. Four, Box office, five, branch office, and six, buyer's option. All right, we are done with the abbreviations for this episode. Uh, I'm sure there will be more coming up. Um, we've got, But we've got three more words. This one is BOA, B-O-A, noun from the 14th century. One, any of a family of large snakes that kill by constriction and that includes the BOA constrictor, anaconda and python number two a long fluffy scarf 
Uh, by the way, I forgot to say that the family name for the boa snake is Boidae, B-O-I-D-A-E. Oh, and um, boa is actually Latin for a water snake. Next is boa constrictor, one, no, noun from 1809, a tropical American boa that is light brown, barred, or mottled with darker brown and reaches a length of 10 feet, which is three meters or more. Broadly, the number one definition for the word boa. And the scientific name is boa constrictor. Oh, interesting. The scientific name is exactly the same as the normal name. Um, and then it says S-Y-N, constrictor, constrictor. All right, last word for this episode is boar, B-O-A-R, noun from before the 12th century, 1A, an uncastrated male swine, 1B, the male of any of several mammals as a guinea pig, number two, synonym is wild boar, boarish is an adjective, and uh, I don't think we need to read the etymology, so we had blush, blusher, blush wine, bluster, bunch of abbreviations, boa, boa constrictor, boar, B, I'm going to pick B-movie as the word of the episode, because I like movies, and I like B-movies, and I need to watch more of them, because they are fun. All right, that is it. Oh, I think today is the last day of July, so happy July, happy August. Life is still happening. There's still lots of terrible atrocities going on in the world. I hope that this is providing a little distraction for you. It's providing some distraction for me. It's hard not to think about all that stuff, though. Uh, Ooh, there's a loud car going by. And, um, you know, keep on fighting the good fight and doing the hard work and talking about all of the stuff that is happening and uh, wear your masks, wash your hands. I assume that still in July, we still need to be doing that. It's going to be going on for months and possibly years, I think. And, you know, this is the life we have. So we just have to make the most of it and try and make it better and make it the best it can be. So on that note, this has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this episode of The Dictionary. I think today is August 1st, so happy August to you. Uh, go stay inside so you don't spread the virus, and it's also probably pretty hot outside depending on where you live. The first word is board, B-O-A-R-D. Not that board, it's the other board. It is the first form, noun, from before the 12th century. Number one is obsolete. We have the synonyms border and edge. Number two, the side of a ship. 3A, a piece of sawed lumber of little thickness and a length greatly exceeding its width. Width, W-I-D-T-H, width. Uh, now we have 3B is plural. It is the 2A2 definition for the word stage. We'll get to that one later. 3C is also plural. We have the synonym skis. Number 4A is archaic. We have the 3A definition for the word table. 4B, a table spread with a meal. 4C, daily meals, especially when furnished for pay. 4D, a table at which a council or magistrates sit. Or magistrates sit, yes. Um, for those of you who care to know, that was the bottom of the first column on page 137. Uh, now we are at the top of the column, top of the next column, and we have a whole bunch of more definitions. Uh, now we have 4E1, a group of persons having managerial, supervisory, investigatory, or advisory powers, as in board of directors, also as in board of examiners. Next is 4E2, an examination given by an examining board, often used in plural as in, past the medical boards. 4F, synonyms are league and association. 4G1, the exposed hands of all the players in a stud poker game. 4G2, an exposed dummy hand in bridge. 5A, a flat, usually rectangular piece of material as wood designed for a special purpose, 
as 5A1. We have the number one definition for springboard. 5A2, synonym is surfboard. 5B, we have the number one definition for the word backboard. Also, a rebound in basketball. 5C, a surface, frame, or device for posting notices. 5D, synonym is blackboard. 5E, synonym is switchboard. 6A, synonym is cardboard. 6B, the stiff foundation piece for the side of a book cover. 7, a securities or commodities exchange. 8 is plural, the low wooden wall enclosing a hockey rink. 9, a sheet of insulating material carrying circuit elements and terminals so that it can be inserted in an electronic electronic apparatus as a computer. 10, uh, this is the last official definition. 10, this synonym is the number two definition for bulletin board. Board-like is an adjective. We have a phrase, across the board, which means so as to include or affect all classes or categories, as in cut spending across the board. Also, in all areas or respects, as in considered an average player across the board. We have another phrase, on board, which has a couple definitions. Number one, the synonym is aboard. And number two, in support of a particular objective, as in needed to get more senators on board for the bill to pass. That was a very long list of definitions for the first form of board. This is for a Middle English board with no A, which is a piece of sawed lumber, border, a ship side, it is from Old English, akin to the Old High German Bort, which means ship's side. Now we have the second form of board. Don't worry, not as long. It is a verb from the 15th century. Um, I think it's actually just... Nope, um, we are starting with transitive. Number one is archaic. To come up against or alongside a ship, usually to attack. Number two, synonyms are accost and address. 3a, to go aboard as a ship, train, airplane, or bus. 3b, to put aboard, as in an airliner boarding passengers. 4, to cover or seal off with boards, as in board up a window. You got to do that during the zombie apocalypse. Also as in board up a house. Same thing. 5, to provide with regular meals and often also lodging, usually for compensation. Six, to check a player into the boards into hockey, or in hockey, not into hockey. Um, now we have the intransitive definition, which says to receive meals or lodging, specifically to live at a boarding school. Next is border, noun from 1531, one that boards, especially one that is provided with regular meals or regular meals and lodging. Two, a person who rides a snowboard. Synonym is snowboarder. Next is board foot, two words, noun from 1896, a unit of quantity for lumber equal to the volume of a board. 12 by 12 by 1 inches. And then it is abbreviated to BD, second word FT, board foot. Next is board game, two words, noun from 1889. A game of strategy, as checkers, chess, or backgammon, played by moving pieces on a board. Uh, I feel like checkers, chess, and backgammon are a very, very small example of how many board games there really are. Board games have had a huge uh, boost in popularity in the last probably 10, 15 years or something. Um, I don't really play board games all that much, but I do enjoy them, and uh, there's a lot of new ones out there. Next is boarding house. One word, noun from 1680, a lodging house at which meals are provided. Next is boarding school. Two words, noun from 1665. A school that provides meals and lodging. 
Next is board man, one word, noun from circa 1923. One, a member of a board. Number two, one who works at a board. Next is board of trade from 1780. One, which is capitalized, the B and the T are capitalized, a British governmental department concerned with commerce and industry. Number two, a commodities exchange. Next and last word for this episode is boardroom, one word, noun from 1836, a room that is designated for meetings of a board. Well, I am going to have to pick board game as the word of the episode because they are a lot of fun. This word board looks super strange to me now. I want to say board. Um, seriously, it doesn't, doesn't look right. None of these w- words look right. Um, board games. Do I have some favorites? I mean, Monopoly is kind of a good classic, but man, it takes a lot of time to play, and I was never very good strategically at that game. When I was a kid, I played once with my neighbor, and he actually, he was a super smart kid, super, super smart, especially with math, and he had taped, he had put a little piece of tape on the the board to that said what his world what his record was and how much money he had or how many you know m- money and assets he had at the end of the game and after he played with me he had to update this piece of tape because he had beaten his record while playing against me yeah that was a super embarrassing moment in my life um there's a new game code word i think that's what it's called i played that a couple of times that is a really really fun game to play with uh some teams um all right that's all i'm gonna say about that until next time this is spencer dispensing information goodbye hello word nerds welcome to the dictionary thank you for joining me rate review share Please tell everybody. The first word is board sailing. One word, noun from 1980. The synonym is wind surfing. Board sailor is a noun. You could also say wind surfer. Uh, board sailor and board sailing seem like uh, were ones that are not used anymore. Next is boardwalk. Well, speaking of Monopoly, if you heard the last episode... Uh, there's actually a documentary called Under the Boardwalk. Um, I think I, it might have been like a Kickstarter or something that I think I donated to and I got a DVD, but I've never watched it. Um, I'm actually really curious to watch that movie. I think it's about the um, the like the world championship plane of Monopoly. Uh, all right. Boardwalk is a noun from 1872. One, a walk constructed of planking. Number two, I just had an image of a whole bunch of people lined up planking and then people would walk on top of them. But that's not what it is. Uh, Number two, a walk constructed along a beach. Next is bort. So it's bored, but with a T instead of a D. It is a variation of bort spelled B-O-R-T. And that is that. Next is boast, B-O-A-S-T. First form Noun from the 14th century. One, the act or an instance of boasting. Synonym is brag. Number two, a cause for pride. Boastful is an adjective. Boastfully is an adverb. And boastfulness is a noun. Now we have the second form of boast. It is a verb from the 14th century. Uh, First is intransitive. One, to puff oneself up in speech. Speak vaingloriously. Wow, that's a word? Vaingloriously. Okay, that's going to be a fun one to read. I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's got vain and glorious right in there. All right, number two is archaic. Synonyms are glory and exult. Exult is spelled E-X-U-L-T. Now we have transitive. One, to speak of or assert with excessive pride. 2a, to possess and often call attention to something that is a source of pride, as in boasts a new stadium. 2b, synonyms are have and contain, as in a room boasting no more than a desk and a chair. Boaster is a noun. We've got some synonym information for boast. 
Yay. Boast, brag, vaunt, V-A-U-N-T, and crow mean to express pride in oneself or one's accomplishments. Boast often suggests ostentation and exaggeration, as in boasts of every trivial success. But it may imply a claiming with proper and justifiable pride, as in the town boasts one of the best museums in the area. Brag suggests crudity and artlessness in glorifying oneself, as in bragging of their exploits. Vaunt, I have never heard this word, vaunt usually connotes more pomp and bombast than boast and less crudity or naivete than brag, as in vaunted his country's military might. Crow usually implies exultant boasting or bragging, as in crowed after winning the championship. Well, that was fun. Now we have the third form of boast. It is a verb from 1823. Looks like it's only transitive. To shape, roughly, in sculpture and stone cutting as a preliminary to finer work. And uh, the example they give is stone, to shape stone. Uh, the origin of this is unknown. Next is boat. It's the boat is that's in the water. First form, noun from before the 12th century, 1A, a small vessel for travel on water. Yep, like I said, 1B, synonym is ship, S-H-I-P. Number two, a boat-shaped container, utensil, or device, as in a gravy boat. Also as in a laboratory boat. That one is weird to me. Is a laboratory shaped? I mean, yes, I guess it could be shaped like a boat. Like if you're, if they got to do underwater stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Boatful is a noun. Boat-like is an adjective. In the same boat means in the same situation or predicament. Next is the second form of boat. It is a verb from 1613. The transitive definition says to place in or bring into a boat. The intransitive definition says to go by boat. Next is boat builder. One word, noun from 1690, uh, 1697. No, 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 you did it wrong. 1679. We got there. One that builds boats. Boat building is a noun. Next is boater. Boat with an E-R, noun from 1605. One, one that travels, or one who travels in a boat. Number two, a stiff hat usually made of braided straw with a brim, hat band, and flat crown. Is that what that hat is called? I can imagine it. I thought, I I mean, if I'm imagining it correctly, I'm going to have to find a picture of this one. A boater hat. Okay. Next is boat hook. Two words, noun from circa 1599. A pole handled hook with a point or knob on the back used especially to pull or push a boat, raft, or log into place. Next is boathouse. One word, noun from 1722. A building to house and protect boats. Next, well, I guess that would be different than a houseboat. A boathouse is that is uh, protects boats, and a houseboat is a boat where you can live in. Boatload is next. One word, noun from 1664. One, a load that fills a boat. Number two, an indefinitely large number, as in a boatload of money. You could also have a truckload or a buttload. Now we have boatman, one word, noun from the 14th century. A man who works on, deals in, or operates boats. Next is boat neck. Uh, One word, noun from 1940. A wide neckline that extends toward the tips of the shoulders. Um, I'm guessing they call it a boat neck because the shape, if you were to look at it uh, like all spread out, it's probably the shape of a boat. Next is boat people. Okay, two words, noun from 1977. Refugees fleeing by boat. They're called boat people. 
Uh, next is boat shoe. Two words, noun from 1977, the same year. A low-cut shoe with a slip-resistant sole. Because boats are in the water and they get wet and you don't want to slip on a boat because you might fall into the water. Next is boat swain. Um, wow, there are a bunch of other versions of this. Boat swain is the word boat and then S-W-A-I-N, all one word. Could also be bosun, B-O-S-U-N. Could also be bosun with an apostrophe instead of the U. So B-O-S apostrophe N. Could also be, wow, B-O apostrophe S apostrophe N. Could also be B-O apostrophe S-U-N. This is a noun from the 14th century. One, a petty officer on a merchant ship having charge or hull maintenance and and related work. A boatswain, bosun, 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 bosun. Number two, a naval warrant officer in charge of the hull and all related equipment. This is from Middle English. Bootswain from boot, which means boat, plus swain, which means boy or servant. And there's more at the word swain. Next is boat train, two words that I would not have expected to be together. A noun from 1864, an express train for transporting passengers between a port and a city. All right, uh, it could also be a bunch of boats lined up going down the river. It's a train of boats. Next and last word for this episode is boatyard, one word, noun from 1795. A yard where boats are built, repaired, and stored, and often sold or rented. We had board, sailing, boardwalk, board, boast, uh, boat, boat builder, boater, boat hook, boathouse, boat load, boat man, boat neck, boat people, boat shoe, boat swain, boat train, and boat yard. Um, Is there, there's a boat swain on a boat train? Probably. Uh, what am I going to pick? What am I going to pick? Um, I will pick boatload as the word of the episode. That has been this episode of this podcast called The Dictionary. We will be on page 138 in the next episode. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, all of you lovely word nerds. Thank you for listening to me talk about these words in this book. The first word is Bob, B-O-B. It is the first form of, spoiler alert, seven. There's seven Bobs. Um, we Bob, uh, let's see, Bob is going to take us through about halfway into the next episode. So this first one is a verb from the 13th century. First is transitive. One, to strike with a quick light blow. Synonym is rap. Number two. To move up and down in a short, quick movement, as in bob the head. That's what pigeons do. Number three, to polish with a bob. Synonym is buff. Next is intransitive, 1A. To move up and down briefly or repeatedly. 1B. To emerge, arise, or appear suddenly or unexpectedly. 2. To nod or curtsy briefly. 3. To try to seize a suspended or floating object with the teeth. I'm surprised they don't have the example uh, bobbing for apples. I honestly think I've only done that once or twice. I have a distinct memory of playing bobbing for apples at my friend's birthday party when we must have been like, God, eight or something? Uh, That may have been the only time I've played that. Next is the second form of bob. It is a noun from circa 1550, 1A. A short, quick, down-and-up motion. 1B is Scottish. Any of several folk dances. 2 is obsolete. A blow or tap, especially with the fist. 3A, a modification of the order in change ringing. 3B, a method of change ringing using a bob. 4, a small polishing wheel of solid felt or leather with rounded edges. Now we have the third form of bob, verb, looks like just transitive, from the 14th century. One is obsolete, synonyms are deceive and cheat. Two is also obsolete, 
To make by fraud. Synonym is filch. F-I-L-C-H. Next is the fourth form of Bob, noun from the 14th century. 1A1. Synonyms are bunch and cluster. 1A2 is Scottish. Synonym is nosegay. Uh, I don't suspect that's how it's pronounced, but that's how it's spelled. N-O-S-E-G-A-Y. Um, maybe it's a bunch or a cluster. Next is 1B. A knob, knot, twist, or curl, especially of ribbons, yarn, or hair. 1C. A short haircut on a woman or child. I mean, it could be on a man too, but typically men don't wear bob haircuts. Uh, 2. We have these 2A definition for the word float. 3. A hanging ball or weight, as on a plumb line. 4. The number one definition for the word trifle, as in bits and bobs. Next is the fifth form of bob. It is a verb. I have to adjust how I'm holding this book. Um, I think I need to get like a music stand or something. All right, uh, let's see. It is a transitive verb from 1675. And number one, to cut shorter. Synonym is crop, as in bob a horse's tail. Number two, to cut in the style of a bob. And hair is the example they give. Next is the sixth form of bob, noun from 1789. It is British slang. And the synonym is a shilling. Um, And it says it's perhaps from the name Bob. And now we have the seventh and last form of Bob. It's not the last word of the episode, though. Noun from 1856. We have the synonym bobsled. Next is bobber. A fun word to say. It is the first form. Noun from 1593. One that bobs. Now we have the second form of bobber, noun from 1904, a person who rides or races on a bobsled. Next is bobbery, noun from uh, 1800. The synonym is hubbub, and it says this is a Hindi word, or it's from the Hindi word bop, B-A-P, with a horizontal line over the A. Or oh, actually, there's two words, bop and re. Re, just R-E is the second word, which literally means, oh, father, with an exclamation point. So, bobbery, hubbub, oh, father. Okay. Next is bobbin, noun from 1530, 1A, a cylinder or spindle on which yarn or thread is wound, as in a sewing machine. 1B, any of various small round devices on which threads are wound for working handmade lace. That must take a lot of work. 1C, a coil of insulated wire. Also, the reel it is wound on. Number two, a cotton cord formerly used by dressmakers for piping. The origin is unknown. Next is bobinet, noun from 1814. A machine-made net of cotton, silk, or nylon, usually with hexagonal mesh. It is a blend of bobbin and net. Next is bobble, B-O-B-B-L-E. First form, verb, from 1812. Number one, we have the first form of the word bob. Go back to the very, very beginning of this episode. And the uh, number two synonym is fumble. Now we have the second form of bobble, noun from 1880. A repeated, uh, one, I should say, a repeated bobbing movement. Two, a small ball of fabric, especially one in a series used on an edging. Three, synonyms are error and mistake, especially a mishandling of the ball in baseball or football. Yeah, they bobbled the ball. Next is bobblehead doll. Two words, noun from 1964. Wow, that's older than I would have expected. A doll having a head that makes repeated bobbing movements. Maybe I can find a picture of an old bobblehead doll. Next is bobby. B-O-B-B-Y. Noun from 
1844. It is British, and it, the synonym is police officer. So it says Bobby is a nickname for Robert after Sir Robert Peel, who organized the London police force. So he was the main dude, and then they uh, they called him Bobbies because of him, supposedly. Next is Bobby Pin, two words, uh, noun from 1926, a flat wire hairpin with prongs that press close together. And this is perhaps from the fourth form of Bob, which had um, a number of definitions, bunch, cluster, nose gay, knob, knot, twist, curl, etc. Next is Bobby Socks, two words. You can spell socks the normal way or S-O-X. Noun from 1927, girl's socks reaching above the ankle. And it says this is perhaps from the bobby and bobby pin. I'm not sure why, though. Seems odd. Okay. Uh, Next and last word for this episode is bobby soxer. S-O-X-E-R. And there's a hyphen. Noun from 1944, an adolescent girl. Because in the 20s, I guess. And after that, they wore bobby socks. Um, All right, I'm going to pick bobblehead doll as the word of the episode because they have always been goofy and silly. That's it for this episode. Um, Oh, I think today is my grandpa's... Oh, let's see. I got to do some math. It is my grandpa's 95th birthday. That is it for this episode. Thank you very much. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Thank you for saying hello. I am going to say hello to you too. The first word for this episode is bobcat. B-O-B-C-A-T. Noun from 1864. A common North American lynx, reddish in base color with dark markings. This is possibly from the fourth form of bob, which is uh, the stubby tail one. Um, All right, where were we? We are at Bobesh, or Bobesh, B-O-B-E-C-H-E, noun from 1855, a usually glass collar on a candle socket to catch drippings or on a candlestick or chandelier to hold suspended glass prisms. They call it a Bobesh, or Bobesh. It is French. Next is Bobo, B-O-B-O. Noun from 2000. What? Okay. A member of a social class of well-to-do professionals who espouse bohemian values and lead bourgeois lives. They get bobo from the beau from bourgeois and the beau from bohemian. Okay, that's interesting. Next is bobolink. Link is added to bobo, but it is not pronounced bobolink. It is bobolink give or take. uh, Noun from circa 1801, an American migratory songbird with the breeding male chiefly black. The scientific name is Dolichonix, Dolichonix orizivorus. Sure. Um, And I forgot the uh, scientific name for bobcat. It is Lynx rufus. Easy for me to say. Next is bobsled, noun from 1837. One, a short sled usually used as one of a pair joined by a coupling. Two, a large usually metal sled used in racing and equipped with two pairs of runners in tandem, a long sleet seat for two or more people, a steering wheel, and a handbrake. Bobsled is an intransitive verb, and bobsledder is a noun. Uh, it's a fun a uh, fun sport to watch, but it uh, seems very fast and scary and dangerous. But next is Bob Sledding, noun from 1883. The act, skill, or sport of riding or racing on a bobsled. Next is Bob Stay, one word, noun from 1744. A stay to hold a ship's bowsprit down. That didn't make any sense to me. Uh, bowsprit is how it sounds, B-O-W-S-P-R-I-T. 
Next is bobtail, noun from 1605, 1A, a bobbed tail. Uh, 1B, a horse, dog, or cat with a bobbed or very short tail, especially the synonym Old English Sheepdog. I do not like that uh, some people cut the tails of animals. I, I don't understand that. Uh, it is very cruel, I think. Um, all right, now we have number two, something curtailed. Bobtail or bobtailed are adjectives. Next is bob veal. Two words. I suspect I am not going to like this one either. Sorry for adding my personal thoughts, but hey, it's my podcast and I'm the one reading. Noun from 1855, the veal of a very young or unborn calf. Uh, so, I mean, I knew veal was already from young calves, but is this is this a specific kind of veal that's even younger? What the what the what? Um, I guess Bob is also a young calf, which I don't remember reading that one, but maybe I did. Okay, moving on. Uh, next is Bob White. One word. Noun from 1819. Any of a genus of quail, especially a popular game bird of eastern and central North America having mottled, chiefly reddish-brown plumage. The genus name is Colinus. And the scientific name of this popular game bird is Colinus virgianus. Next is Boccaccio, B-O-C-A-C-C-I-O, noun from circa 1890, a large rockfish of the Pacific coast locally important as a market fish. This is perhaps modified of the Spanish Boccaccia, which is augmented of boca, which means mouth. So maybe they have an interesting mouth. I don't know why they're called a rockfish. The scientific name is Sebastes pausispinus, something like that. Next is bocce. You could spell it a few ways, B-O-C-C-I-E or B-O-C-C-I or B-O-C-C-E. Noun from 1860, a game of Italian origin similar to lawn bowling, played on a long, narrow, usually dirt court. This is Italian from bocce, B-O-C-C-E, which is a plural of, I'm going to say boccia, B-O-C-C-I-A, which means ball, which is from the vulgar Latin botia, which means boss. There was, I think, an old episode of this podcast where I was trying to remember the name of bocce ball, and I could not come up with it, so here you go. You were probably yelling at me, but I finally came up with it. No, I didn't. Next is Bach, B-O-C-K, noun from uh, 1856. A strong, dark, rich beer usually sold in the early spring. This is German, short for Bach beer, which it was uh, by shortening an alter, altering an, or alternation alternative from... Einbecker beer, so they shortened that to become Bach beer, and that got shortened to be Bach, um, and Einbecker beer literally is beer from Einbeck, which is from Einbeck, Germany. We're getting a history lesson here. Next is Bod, B-O-D, noun from 1833. Number one is British. Synonyms are fellow and guy, and number two, synonym is body. Next is BOD, all caps, abbreviation for one, biochemical oxygen demand. Number two, biological oxygen demand. One is biological, one is biochemical. Next is bodacious. Excuse me, this is an adjective from 1832. Number one is southern and midland. Synonyms are outright and unmistakable. Two, synonyms are remarkable and noteworthy, as in a bodacious bargain. Um, this word, I, I don't know why I didn't say this before, but this word, in my mind, is from the 80s, but it clearly is from uh, the 1980s, I should say, but it is clearly from 150 years before that. Uh, so it's interesting to see, the, see this context uh, that's way older than I would have thought. But here we go with number three, 
Synonyms are sexy and voluptuous, as in bodacious babes. Bodaciously is an adverb. I really am curious. Things like, words like that, bodacious and rad and awesome and uh, even great, I think, to some some extent, uh, they just took on whole new meanings at a certain point in time. Um, it is probably a, bend, a blend of the words bold and audacious. Next is bode, B-O-D-E, first form, verb from before the 12th century. Looks like it's just transitive. One is archaic, to announce beforehand. Synonym is foretell. And number two, to indicate by signs. Synonym is presage or presage. I I don't know how to say it. Uh, Let's see. This is from Middle English, from Old English, bodion, which is akin to the Old English biodon, which means to proclaim. And there's more at the word bid, B-I-D. Now we have the second form of bode. It is the past form of the word bide. Next is bodega, noun from 1846. One, a storehouse for maturing wine. 2A, synonym is wine shop. Uh, 2B1, we have the 5A definition for the first form of the word bar. 2B2, synonym is barroom. Sorry for stalling there. Sometimes I get confused I have to figure out because it doesn't it doesn't actually say to be two. It just says two in parentheses. And then I have to backtrack. OK, that was B. So this is B2. And then I have to backtrack more. OK, it was to be two. But moving on to number three, a usually small grocery store in an urban area, specifically one specializing in Hispanic groceries. So this is a Spanish word from the Latin apotheca, which means storehouse. And there's more at the word apothecary. Next is bodement. Bode, M-E-N-T. Noun from 1605. Number one, synonym is omen. And number two, we have the number two definition for the word prediction. And now we have the last word. I hope I say it correctly. Bodhisattva or bodhisattva. It is a Sanskrit word. I'm just going to say that before anything else. B-O-D-H-I-S-A-T-T-V-A. And the other spelling looks like it has two Ds instead of one D. Um, So this is a noun from 1828. Sorry, my throat is getting raspy. A being that compassionately refrains from entering nirvana in order to save others and is worshipped as a deity in Mahayana Buddhism. I appreciate this very much. So this is, like I said, Sanskrit. Bodhisattva is one whose essence is enlightenment, which is from Bodhi, which means enlightenment, plus Sattva, which means being. And there's more at the word bid again. Um, well, let's just do a quick scan of the words. Bobcat, bodish, bobo, bobolink, bobsled, bobsledding, bobstay, bobtail, bob veal, bob white, boccaccio, bocci. I just like saying those words. Bach, bod, bod, bodacious, bode, bode, bodega, bodement, and bodhisattva. I have to pick bodhisattva as the word of the episode because I just very much like that. That is it for this episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing the information in this book called The Dictionary. Oh, that's the name of the podcast. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this episode of The Dictionary. Um, It feels really good to sit down. Let me just tell you what. Okay, the first word is bodran. B-O-D-H-R-A-N. It is a noun from 1972, a shallow, handheld Irish drum. It is an Irish word from, um, well, it's the same word, so I don't know why I said that at all. Uh, But maybe I should find an audio example of this shallow, handheld Irish drum.
The next word is bodice. B O D I C E. It's spelled bod ice. It is a noun from 1566. One, the upper part of a woman's dress. Number two is archaic. We have the synonyms corset and stays. S T A Y S. Um, this is an alternative of the word bodies, which is the plural of the word body. And we are going to be getting to both of those words in this episode. Next is um, bodice ripper. Two words. It sounds bad, and I think it is bad. Noun from 1980. A historical or gothic romance typically featuring scenes in which the heroine is subjected to violence. Yes, that is bad. Um, Maybe there are movies or something, stories uh, that are examples of this, but I'm not probably going to look into that. Next is bodied, B-O-D-I-E-D, adjective from circa 1547, having a body of a specified kind, used in combination, as in full-bodied, also as in glass-bodied. Next is bodiless. I think we can see where this is going. It is an adjective from the 14th century, and it means having no body. So after somebody got their head chopped off in a guillotine, their head was bodiless. Next is bodily, B-O-D-I-L-Y. It is the first form, adjective from the 14th century. One, having a body. Synonym is physical. Number two, of or relating to the body, as in bodily comfort. Also as in bodily organs. Opposed to what kind of organs? I guess maybe, no, yeah. I think all organs pretty much are in the body or related to the body. Um, now we have the second form of bodily. It is an adverb from the 14th century. One, in the flesh. Number two, as a whole. As That's the whole, all of it, W-H-O-L-E. Synonym is all together. Now we have the word Boating, B-O-D-I-N-G. It is not, we are going boating in the river. This is something else. This is a noun from the 13th century, and it just means foreboding. That's the synonym. Next is bodkin, B-O-D-K-I-N, bodkin. Noun from the 14th century, 1A. Synonyms are dagger. I almost said dadger. That's not right. Dagger and stiletto. 1B, a sharp, slender instrument for making holes in cloth. 1C, an ornamental hairpin shaped like a stiletto. Number two, a blunt needle with a large eye for drawing tape or ribbon through a loop or hem. Now we have the word body. This is going to take a while. It is the first form noun from before the 12th century. 1A, The main part of a plant or animal body, especially as distinguished from limbs and head. Synonym is trunk. 1B. The main central or principal part, as 1B1, the nave of a church. 1B2. The bed or box of a vehicle on or in on or in which the load is placed. 1B3. The enclosed or partly enclosed part of an automobile. 2A. The organized physical substance of an animal or plant, either living or dead. As 2A1. The material part or nature of a human being. 2A2. A dead organism. Synonym is corpse. 2B. In human... uh, No, it says a human being. Synonym is person. 3a, a mass of matter distinct from other masses, as in a body of water. 3b, something that embodies or gives concrete reality to a thing, also a sensible object in physical space. 3c, we have the synonym, uh, synonyms aggregate and quantity. In this case, would it be aggregate? I don't think so. I think it's aggregate and quantity, as in a body of evidence. 
4A, the part of a garment covering the body or trunk. 4B, the main part of a literary or journalistic work. And we have the 2B definition for the word text, T-E-X-T, like I'm going to text you some stuff. 4C, the sound box or pipe of a musical instrument. 5, a group or a group of persons or things, as 5A, a fighting unit. Synonym is force. 5B, a group of individuals organized for, for some purpose, as in a legislative body. I hope they make good legislative decisions. 6A, fullness and richness of flavor, as of wine. 6B, Synonyms are viscosity and consistency, and that is used especially of oils and grease. 6C, denseness, fullness, or firmness of texture. And then finally, 6D, fullness or resonance of a musical tone. Let's look at the etymology from Middle English, from Old English, bodig, B-O-D-I-G, akin to the Old High German bote, which means corpse, B-O-T-E-H. Learned something new. Bote means corpse. Now we have the second form of body. It is a transitive verb from the 15th century. One, to give form or shape to. Synonym is embody, E-M-B-O-D-Y. Number two, synonyms are represent, and symbolize, and that is usually used with the word forth, F-O-R-T-H. Now we have the word body bag. It is two words, noun from 1954, a large zippered bag, as of rubber or vinyl, in which a human corpse is placed, especially for transportation. So what did they use before 1954? Did they have bags, but they didn't call them body bags? Or did they not have a bag? Did they not put the corpse in a bag of some kind? And then somebody was like, well, maybe we should cover this up because maybe people don't want to see dead people just out in the open. Okay, moving on to body blow. Two words, noun from 1792. One, a blow to the body. It's probably used in boxing. Number two, a damaging or deeply felt blow, as in, an economic body blow. Next is bodyboard, one word, noun from 1982. A short surfboard on which the river, the, no, that's not at all what it says, on which the rider lies prone. Bodyboard is an intransitive verb, and body border is a noun. Next is bodybuilding, one word, noun from 1904. The developing of the body through exercise and diet. Specifically, the developing of the physique for competitive exhibition. Bodybuilder is a noun. And our last word for this episode is body cavity. Two words, noun from 1875. A cavity in an animal body. Specifically, the word, uh, it's the synonym, coelom. I think that's how it's pronounced. C-O-E-L-O-M. All right, what were our words? Bodron, bodis, or bodice, bodice ripper, bodied, bodiless, bodily, bodily, ba- boding, bodkin, body, body bag, body blow, body board, body building, body cavity. I think I'm going to pick bodiless as the word of the episode because, you know, it's not good, but it's sort of a funny concept if you just think of the idea that, oh, you know, the, the heads in Futurama, those are all bodiless as well. Sometimes I wish I were bodiless because... I'm getting old, and my body is falling apart, and I have aches and pains all over the place, and so I think I just want to be a head in a jar and just be, or just be pure consciousness. That would be great. All right, that's the end of the episode. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the Dictionary Podcast. Um, I was talking to somebody. Somebody sent me a message on Reddit, um, and I mentioned this podcast, uh, because they said something about they like to put podcasts on while they sleep. And I said, oh, well, my dictionary podcast is probably good for that. And then I said, well, maybe I should actually record an episode where I'm actually speaking slow and calm and soothing, which would be great for sleeping. 
Uh, I'm not going to do that in this episode, but maybe in a future one I will. We are still in the body words. Uh, we, uh, the, let's see, the last two words are not body related, but as I was reading through these, uh, the word body looks and sounds weird. Um, yeah, when you see like 30 of them in a row, that's what happens. All right, the first word is body-centered. Two words with a hyphen, adjective from 1921, relating to or being a crystal space lattice in which each cubic unit cell has an atom at its center and at each vertex. Compare to the synonym. That's not the synonym. The synonym is face-centered. I feel like I need to look more into this because I don't totally understand that. I need a visual for it. Next is body check. Two words, noun from 1892. A blocking of an opposing player with the body, as in ice hockey or lacrosse, did they have those in 1892? Um, body check is a transitive verb. They must have had something like those in 1892. Next is body clock. Noun from 1968. The internal mechanisms that schedule periodic bodily functions and activities. Usually not used technically. So more, uh, so not like in a scientific situation, they're not going to say body clock, but it's more colloquial would that be the right word next is body corporate two words noun from the 15th century and we just have the synonym corporation it's interesting that this was coined back way back in the 15th century and in you know recent years legally corporations uh, are designated as people which is interesting um, and so, I don't know, I just find it cool that, or not cool, but uh, I just find it interesting that, you know, body corporate, that's sort of where it comes from. That's a, a body and a corporation, whatever. Moving on to body count. Two words, noun from 1965. One, a count of the bodies of killed enemy soldiers. Number two, the number of persons involved in a particular activity. Next is body double. Two words, noun from 1981, a double who takes the place of an actor, especially in scenes calling for nudity. Um, yeah, that's often, I mean, I guess stunt, stunt double would be when they're used in uh, stunts. I always love seeing pictures of actors with their either stunt doubles or body doubles or whatever. Uh, you know, they're dressed the same. They've got the same hair. They, are us they usually look pretty similar and they definitely have like the same body size and type. Um, it, it's just always funny to me. Next is body English. Two words. English has a capital E. Noun from 1908. Bodily motions made in a usually unconscious effort to influence the progress of a propelled object as a ball. Next is bodyguard. Oh, actually, that's about pool, billiards. Um, I really want to learn how to do that. I... Years ago, I learned how to, you know, angle the ball. I was always just hitting them straight, but I learned that if you hit it off to the side a little bit, you can make the ball go at an angle. And then I always felt that the next step up from that would be, you know, putting spin on the cue ball, which I think is, that's considered English, right? Body motion, usually unconscious effort to influence progress. Um, but I could never, I, I, can, I can do a little backspin or forward spin, but I can't do anything like make the cue ball curve or whatever. Uh, I also don't practice, so maybe if I practiced, I could do that. But I just think it's amazing the control that like professional billiards players have on, on all the balls on the table. It's pretty amazing. Next is bodyguard, noun from 1704. A usually armed attendant or group of attendants whose duty is to protect a person. Next is body language, two words, noun from 1926. The gestures, movements, and mannerisms by which a person or animal communicates with others. We do so much unconscious body language that, and in addition to that, we are unconsciously reacting to other people's body language that we're not even, we're not even aware that we're doing it, um, but there's so much that happens when you can actually see somebody, especially if you're in the same uh, location with them. 
So it's great these days as I'm recording this, we're all stuck in our homes during this pandemic. Uh, so it's great that we can have these Zoom calls with people where you can get some of that uh, that body language to you know a little degree. But I I sometimes do um, recordings on these other podcasts, whatever, where it's just audio only. So you don't get that body language. It's it's hard to communicate with them without that. So it's it's just really astounding how much information is actually passed between people just with body language. Okay, next is body louse. Two words, noun from 1575. A louse feeding primarily on the body, especially a sucking louse feeding on the body and living in the clothing of humans. Called also, oh, this is great. Called also cootie, C-O-O-T-I. Boy, I have distinct memories of being in elementary school with my friends at like the lunch table or something saying, Oh, you got cooties or doing the cootie shot thing or whatever. I wonder if kids these days still talk about cooties. Oh boy. There are some cooties around the world right now that we are trying to stay away from. All right. The scientific name for this sucking louse is pediculus humanus humanus. Next is body mass index. Three words, Noun from 1983, a measure of the body fat that is the ratio of the weight of the body in kilograms to the square of its height in meters. Um, so this, they, they also call this BMI. I think that would be, that's the same thing. In general, I think this is fine, but my main issue is that they don't actually measure the body fat. From what I understand, they're actually measuring just the weight of the body compared to the height of the body. And somebody can weigh a lot because they have a lot of muscle, and that's going to skew the body mass index, the BMI. So while I think that this is fine, you, you have to take it with a grain of salt if you were not aware of that. Moving on to body mechanics, two words, noun from circa 1970, Systematic exercises designed especially to develop coordination, endurance, and poise. Next is body piercing. Two words, noun from 1989. The practice or an instance of adorning the body with jewelry or ornamentation that penetrates the flesh. I'm very tempted to post a picture of some extreme body piercing. Uh, I will try to avoid the body... um, adjustments, augmentation. I, there's a different word that I can't think of right now. I'll, I'll try and stick just with body piercing. Uh, it's really crazy what... I, I I have no problem with it. I had an earring once. I actually had two for a while um, in one ear. One of them got all weird, so I took that out. And then eventually, when I got older, I was like, why do I even have this earring? This is... It was cool at the time when I was younger, like eighth grade, but it's not... It's not for me anymore, so I took it out. I think I do still have a hole in my ear, but I think it's pretty amazing um, what people do, and it's just, you know, you can have fun with it. So that's body piercing. Uh, Next is body politic. Two words, noun from the 15th century. One, a group of persons politically organized under a single governmental authority. Number two is archaic. We have the number two definition for the word corporation. Three, a people considered as a collective unit. Next is body shirt. Two words. You could probably just call it a shirt, right? Num- uh, it is a noun from 1967. One, a close-fitting shirt or blouse. Number two, a woman's close-fitting top made with a sewn-in or snapped crotch. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So it's just sort of like a shirt that really covers the body more so. Next is body shop. Two words, noun from 1954. A shop where automotive bodies are made or repaired. Next is body snatcher. Two words, sounds like the name of a movie. Noun from 1812. One who steals corpses from graves. Next is body stocking. Two words, noun from 1965. A usually sheer, close-fitting, one-piece garment for the torso that often has sleeves and legs. Next is body suit. 
I have a feeling this is similar. Noun from 1969. A close-fitting one-piece garment for the torso. Next is body surf. One word. Uh, let's see, is it a verb? It's an intransitive verb from 1943. To ride on a wave without a surfboard by planing on the chest and stomach. Body surfer is a noun. I've done this a little bit. It's fun. I don't get a lot of opportunities to do that. Next is body wall. Two words, noun from 1862. The external surface of the animal body consisting of ectoderm and mesoderm and enclosing enclosing the body cavity. So it's like the skin, kind of. Next is body wash. One word, noun from 1988. A liquid product for cleansing the body. Next is body work. One word, noun from 1908. One, a vehicle body. A vehicle body. Yeah, it's the body of a vehicle. Number two, the act or process of making or repairing vehicle bodies. Three, therapeutic touching or manipulation of the body by using specialized techniques like massage. I have been getting regular massages, which is great. I have gone years and years without getting massages, and now I finally am, and I think it's helping. Um, Body worker is a noun. They could be working on human bodies, or they could be working on automotive bodies. Next is body wrap. Two words. Wrap is W-R-A-P. It is a noun from 1974. A body treatment involving the application of usually oils or gels, followed by a wrapping of the body with a sheet. Sounds interesting. All right, we are done with the body words. The next word is baymite or bearmite, something like that. B-O-E-H-M-I-T-E. It is a noun from circa 1929, a mineral consisting of an orthohombic, oh, I remember Mark had trouble with that word, of an orthohombic form of aluminum oxide and hydroxide, A-L-O, and then and in parentheses, O-H, found in bauxite. Uh, this is f- German, bomite, from Johann Bohm, B-O-H-M, and then in parentheses it says B-O-E-H-M, so a different spelling, Uh, who died in 1952, was a German chemist. And our last word for this episode is Bohr, or Bohr, capital B-O-E-R. It is a noun from 1800, a South African or Dutch or Huguenot descent. A South African, oh, a South African of Dutch or Huguenot descent. I don't think I said that correctly. So this is Dutch, it literally means farmer, And there's more at the word boor, B-O-O-R, which is for later. So we had body centered, body check, body clock, body corporate, body count, body double, body English, body guard, body language, body louse, body mass index, body mechanics, body piercing, body politic, body shirt, body shop, body snatcher, body stocking, body suit, body surf, body wall, body wash, body work. See, body sounds weird now. Body wrap, bomite, and boor, 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 boor. Um, I think I am going to pick body English as the word of the episode because I like playing pool, even though I don't get to do it often. That is it for this episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye.